Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen, the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship in Brooklyn, New York. And I hope your day's going really well, whatever time of day it is for you, whether it's morning, noon, or night. Uh, it's very early in the morning here, getting ready for uh, a busy ministry day. Um, but I want to start my day with uh, a time of daily devotion. I want to start my day with uh, spending a little bit of time in God's Word. And so I invite you to participate in that. Thanks so much for uh, for being here. Uh, this is our daily devotion series. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible and read it together each day. We post these videos five days a week, um, but they're there for you to access at any time, whether it's in the morning, whether it's in the evening, whether you miss a couple of days and kind of binge watch them, for want of a better term, uh, on the on the weekends or, or, or whatever it may be. These are generally eight, nine, ten minutes long, something like that sometimes even less, uh, and it's just intended to be a tool to help us spend a little bit of time in God's Word each day. Uh, you don't need this tool, but we, we think it's helpful for a lot of people, and a lot of people have told us that, and so that's why uh, we do this. Um, you know, sometimes people just need a little reminder so they can you know, they can get that little notification bell on their device that says, hey, you know what, a new daily devotion video is posted, and that's, that's helpful, that, that encourages them, that, that helps um, increase their likelihood of spending some time in God's Word each day. Some, some people in our ministry are, are not really strong readers, and so to have um, a tool like this where we're reading together is really helpful for them. Uh, there are people in our ministry who are learning the English language, and a tool like this helps them um, helps them experience the scriptures in English as they as they learn the language. So there's a variety of reasons why uh, this tool is good news for different folks, and I hope it's good news for you. We're reading the Gospel of Luke presently. We just go through a book beginning to end a chapter at a time. And today we're reading Luke chapter 10. Chapter 10 is about average length, 42 verses, and um, we're going to see in chapter 10 Jesus send out his uh, disciples on a missionary journey. There's a, a prayer of thanksgiving. There's the most important commandment. Uh, a teaching of Jesus that I that I really value, and uh, then Jesus visits two sisters named Martha and Mary. Let's read Luke ten. Begins this way in verse one. The Lord now chose seventy two other disciples and sent them ahead in pairs to all the towns and places he planned to visit. Now, uh, I've said a lot in recent chapters. Um, when we think about Jesus' disciples in terms of his earthly ministry, very often we think of just the twelve, the twelve sort of the, who were his, his, his closest companions and those that he was really pouring into directly. And they were his disciples, of course. Um, but Scripture begins to call them apostles, uh, which means those who are sent out uh, to distinguish them from the larger group of disciples. Jesus had many more disciples during his earthly ministry than just the twelve, and so he's chosen 72 of them uh, to go out. These were his instructions to them. The harvest is great, but the workers are few, so pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. Now go and remember that I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. Don't take any money with you, nor a traveler's bag, nor an extra pair of sandals, and don't stop to greet anyone on the road. Whenever you enter someone's home, first say, May God's peace be upon this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they are not, the blessing will return to you. Don't move around from home to home. Stay in one place, eating and drinking what they provide. Don't hesitate to accept hospitality, because those who work deserve their pay. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever's said before you. Heal the sick 
and tell them the kingdom of God is near you now. But if a town refuses to welcome you, go out into its streets and say, We wipe even the dust of your town from our feet to show we've abandoned you to your fate. And know this, the kingdom of God is near. I assure you, even wicked Sodom will be better off than such a town on Judgment Day. What sorrow awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida, for the, if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago, clothing themselves in burlap and throwing ashes on their head to show their remorse. Yes, Tyre and Sidon will be better off on Judgment Day than you, and you people of Capernaum, will you be honored in heaven? No, you'll go down to the place of the dead. And then he said to the disciples, Anyone who accepts your message is also accepting me. And anyone who rejects you is rejecting me. And anyone who rejects me is rejecting God who sent me. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to him, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. He told them, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I've given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered in heaven. At that same time, Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit, and he said, O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the child like, Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then when they were alone, he turned to the disciples and said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you've seen. I tell you, many prophets and kings long to see what you see, but they didn't see it. And they long to hear what you hear, but they didn't hear it. Verse 25, One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, What does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus told him. Do this and you will live. Now, man wanted to, this man wanted to justify his actions, and so he asked Jesus, Well, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied with a story. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along, and when he saw the man, he felt compassion for him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins, telling him, Take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you the next time that I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, Jesus asked. The man replied, the one who showed him mercy. And then Jesus said, yes. Now go and do the same. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, it doesn't, seem, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come help me. But the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you're worried and upset over all these details. There's only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it. And it will not be taken away from her. That's the end of Luke uh, chapter 10. And a lot of 
Uh, there's a lot to learn from here in this chapter. Um, one of my favorite chapters in this gospel. And just really a key teaching of Jesus here is that there are a number of things. When we look at this greatest commandment, there are a number of things that we can do. We have freedom. We get to make choices. Uh, we can choose to do a number of good things. And, and of, of course, that freedom can get us into trouble. We can choose. We can choose negative things, harmful things. We can choose sin. We have that freedom. Um, because without the freedom to choose sin, there's, there is no freedom. Um, but let, just, just limit our thinking for a moment to all the good things that we can do. We can, an infinite number of good, positive, helpful, beneficial, value-adding things that we can choose to do. But Jesus says, hey, all that's fine, and do those things. Do all those good things. But as my follower, as my disciple, of all the good things that you have the freedom to do, there's only two things that you must do to call yourself my disciple. And that's the greatest commandment. The first thing you must do to call yourself a disciple of Jesus is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. And he says the second is equally important. It's not extra credit, but equally important. And that's to love your neighbor as yourself. And then he goes on through this parable of the Samaritan to teach that your neighbor is just anybody who's in proximity to you, wherever you are. In this moment, somebody's your neighbor. Probably a lot of somebody's are your neighbor. And when we're disciples of Jesus, we have responsibility for them. We do. We have a responsibility. We don't have to like them. We don't have to agree with them. But we do have to love them, and we have to love them as we love ourselves. That's challenging, that's challenging stuff, but that's how it is in the kingdom of God. It's an upside down kingdom. It's a counterintuitive kingdom. It's a kingdom where the least will be greatest and the greatest will be least. It's a kingdom where we find true life when we're willing to lose our lives for the, for, for the sake of others. And that's what Jesus is teaching on here. Uh, I'll stop there so this video is not any longer than it already is. Uh, thanks so much for participating in Luke chapter 10. I look forward to seeing you next time for Luke chapter 11. God bless.